Uh, Paul, um, you were mentioning Mark 13, 32, where Jesus says he does not know the hour. Hmm. Um, now, how can he be God if he does not know the hour? Because he has two natures. Okay, so he, he, he has two natures, but he is God in the flesh, according to yes. Christian belief. He's, and he is, he, while he has the human nature, his divine nature is still with him. It's not, he, 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 is, he has both natures at the same time. So, how is it possible if he had the divine nature with him, for him to say he does not know the hour? Because, very good, if he was God in the flesh, even though he had the human nature, his divine nature does know the hour. So, why is he saying he, that he is saying, I do not know the hour. Well, and know the sun. Know the sun. Yes, it is, it is true that he did not know the hour, and he was also hungry and thirsty. And so all this tells us is that Jesus, as a man, so humiliated himself that he took on the weaknesses of humans in human flesh. Now, if we are to say that this is beyond our reason, I have no problem with this. We're talking about the Trinity and something that our minds cannot completely grasp. Your question is about Jesus saying not knowing the day of the hour, right? Oh my God, it's fantastic. You're very Okay, knowledgeable. thank you very much. If you, can, if, if you can emphasize on that, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. In, in, in one minute. Uh, again, in this particular text, Jesus is talking as the Son, and he says, of, the, of that hour no man knows, not the Father, uh, not, not the Son, nor the angels, or, or anybody else. Let me point out, I'm not sure why, uh, again, uh, my Muslim friends bring this up, because you can't believe Jesus actually said this. He identified himself as the Son in this text, and you reject that he does that. But be that as it may, there are certain things of Jesus' divine attributes that were veiled in the Incarnation. For example, his glory was not seen. He didn't glow when he walked down the streets of Jerusalem. Uh, if, the, if they were walking in the dark, the, the, the disciples didn't get to not use a flashlight or something uh, when Jesus was by because he glowed so much. But um, obviously omnipresence, things like that. There was a veiling, and for some purpose that is not explained to us, for some purpose, Jesus, uh, in that particular instance, he has supernatural knowledge elsewhere, but in that particular instance, that particular piece, piece of knowledge has been veiled during the time of the Incarnation. Um, obviously, omnipresence, things like that. There was a veiling, and for some purpose that is not explained to us, for some purpose, Jesus, uh, in that particular instance, he has supernatural knowledge elsewhere, but in that particular instance, that particular piece of knowledge has been veiled during the time of the Incarnation. Okay, thank I you. I got it done in one minute. Right. Good. <laughs> But if the Trinity is true, then Jesus is fully God. And so he should have full knowledge, right? Here's the problem. Mark 13, 32. Jesus says, about that day and hour, no one knows. So am I going to believe Jesus or whoever this other person is? I don't know. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. So this is Jesus confessing to not knowing something. He's confessing ignorance about the issue of whether or not, or of when he's coming back. So Jesus says he doesn't know something. We have two options. Did Jesus really not know, or was he lying? Jesus, as God, really did know, but pretended not to know. Option number one. Or, Jesus really did not know, and therefore is not really God. At least not in a Trinitarian sense. So, for us, this is a problem. This is another one of these major problems because it, either we have Jesus misrepresenting himself, lying, saying he didn't know something that he really did know, or he's God, or he's not God. So either he's God and he's lying, or he's not God. That's, none of those, neither of those are acceptable from a Trinitarian perspective. So this is a real point of tension. 
So what's the comeback? You've heard it, right? My friends from Australia. When Jesus said he didn't know, he was speaking out of his human nature. And he's, when he did other things, he was doing it out of his divine nature, right? So he wasn't speaking as God. He was speaking as man when he said he didn't know because humans don't have full knowledge and God does. So if he speaks and says, I don't know something, he's saying that as a man but not as God. Okay, so that's the comeback. We, you guys, have, have you heard that comeback before? Yes. In conversation? Okay. So here's the response. But the Trinity teaches that there's only one person subsisting in two natures. So the thing that you're interacting with, the, the being, the person that you're interacting with, that's what there can only be one of. So if he has a divine nature and a human nature, let's assume that he does, he still only has one mind. He still only has one person out of which he interacts with you. You understand? So if we're going to say that, well, in his human mind and his divine mind, we've split the person and we're all Nestorian heretics. So we can't say that. It's an invalid response to the Mark 13, 32 problem. And it makes us heretics. Which, as Trinitarians, we're trying not to be heretics. But it's, it's hard work. He cannot have two minds, one that knew something and another that did not know something, unless we now want to make the absurd claim that mind and person are not correlated. That's what you're stuck with. Mind and person are not anything to do with each other. But I mean, if you think about that for a moment, that's absolutely the, the epitome of absurdity as, as a contradiction.